Hello, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Sam Talks Nerdy. Hope you're happy, doing well, dominating life, crushing it. It is time for a brand new installment of the monthly wrap up. Sam, as always, we're covering the news of the previous month, this time being January, and we have quite a few things to talk about, so let's get into it. We have a couple of possible names as to who could replace Kang since Jonathan Majors is, well, you know, up the river. And one of them is Coleman Domingo, and I'm not quite familiar with his work. I mean, I know I've heard he's a really good actor, but I don't think I've heard him in is the Riddler Secrets in the Dark audio series where he voices Batman, which uh, I'll come back to that here in a second. But the next actor I know very well, and that is John David Washington. And honestly, I'm more rooting for him because I just... Well, honestly, I, I just, I know him more, and I think he could do a really good Kang. I mean, could Coleman Domingo do Kang really well? Yeah, I, I guess, but, I mean, for him to be in the MCU, and yet, and he has expressed interest, I see him more as, like, a Dark Hawk, or Nighthawk, Dark Hawk, Shadow Hawk, um, it's, what's his name? I always get I always get him confused with, with a normal Marvel character, and people always get on me about this. But he's basically Marvel's Batman, and I think he would make a pretty cool, well, that character. Century has had a pretty interesting month because, well, first off, Stephen Ewan, who was originally supposed to play the Century in Thunderbolts, left the project because he had some he had a scheduling conflict. But obviously, this is Marvel, so with a so with an actor leaving, people automatically go to oh my god marvel's dead what are we gonna do no one wants to be a marvel anymore when honestly just like due to the strikes and the postponing he just like, yeah, he had, he had to leave because something came up and a few of the names have gone around as two could play century of course my votes were either ryan gosling or alexander skarsgård but as of now it looks like lewis pullman from top gun maverick could be playing century and i'm not real familiar with him or his dad i guess but i mean all I know is that he's a Top Gun Maverick, and that's it. I mean, he can play a... He plays a nerdy guy in Top Gun Maverick, apparently, and Bob Reynolds is sort of like a schlubby kind of guy, so I guess he'd kind of work out, but... Uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I need to watch Top, Top Gun Maverick. I actually have a Century comic on my Amazon Save for Later that I want to read because I'm trying to learn more about the Century other than just the basic knowledge. Cor according to, to JG General Hole 8... Namor will return in What If Season 3 in an episode featuring Captain America, Black Panther, and Hydra set in World War II. Oh boy. I So something about me is that I am a sucker for World War II history and superheroes, so put those together and I am a freaking kid in a candy store. I am the happiest kid alive, man alive, whatever, just... This would make me happy because this will basically be like a pseudo the invaders kind of thing. If you kind of know what I'm saying, where we'll have Captain America, maybe Bucky, Namor, King of Zuri, maybe some of the other Howling Commandos like Dum Dum Dugan, Gabe Jones, whoever else. Just if this is it, like, I hope this happens because just. This episode will be baller. We got a lot of news for Daredevil Born Again because just it's now currently filming us recording on this video and just yeah, January was a huge month for this show because just like it was almost every day, every week we got a brand new bit of news talking about who's coming back, who's not coming back, what's changing and just, I mean, let, let, let's get into it. First off, Foggy and Karen are coming back for Daredevil Born Again. So this is basically Daredevil season four, but just with a title change, because apparently in the original version of the show, they died off screen. And this and just yeah, just I mean I'm glad they're back because it wouldn't be the same without them. So we so just I'm just yeah, just I'm excited because Nelson, Murdoch, and Paige are back in action and hopefully nothing nothing will that happen to them this season. You will also see the return of Wilson Bethel as Bullseye again. This is basically Daredevil Season 4 because, I mean, hello, everyone wants coming back from the original show, so I don't know why they're, I don't know why they're still calling it Daredevil Born again. Well, I mean, now I mean, now he's on Disney+, Plus, so I don't know. 
Okay, I, 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 get, I guess that kind of makes sense. And I cannot wait to see him back as Bullseye. He was probably the, one of the best parts of Season 3. And my one hope for his character is that for his Bullseye suit, it's literally just a recycled Daredevil suit of just he took it, cut off the horns. Nope. And just, you know, painted all black and white and just, yeah. And, and like, I cannot wait to see the fights that will happen between him and Daredevil. And hopefully we won't see Karen get something in the chest. You will also see White Tiger and Daredevil Born Again. And this is a holdover from the original version of the show where he was, I think, one of the first story arcs of the season. And, we'll, and, we, won't, and we, won't, we won't be getting just one White Tiger. No, we'll be getting two White Tigers. We'll, we'll be getting both Hector Aiea and his daughter Ava Aiea who you might know from Ultimate Spider-Man. And we've already seen a set photo of, of White Tiger in costume, and it looks pretty good, though I, I kind of miss the uh, the cat ears. So, I mean, who knows? Maybe those will be added in post. We'll have to see. And also, I haven't wanted White Tiger and Daredevil for a while. I think all the way back when it was on Netflix, I thought, oh, oh, oh how, cool, how cool would it be if we got, like, White Tiger, like, like I think it was Ava or the other female one. And like in a future season, then she can get spin off and so on and so forth. Of course, this was back when, you know, both the shows and the movies were apparently separate. But, well, here we are. Anya Kaholtra has joined Creature Commandos as Cerse. And not really much else to say here when it comes to that. I mean, I know of Cerse. I mean, I watched Ju Justin Unlimited, and that's probably what I know her from is that episode where she turns one woman to a pig, and then Batman sings that song. Such a good episode. We have our first look at Hugh Jackman wearing the Wolverine mask thanks to some Leaf Dipple 3 promo art and I really hope he wears this in the movie and it's not just for promo art because I mean how long have we waited to see him in a comic accurate Wolverine suit? Okay him wearing the suit is already when as it is but him wearing the suit and the mask would just be the ultimate win for us X-Men fans. And you also is excited for the, for the trailer coming out because that is coming in hot. Probably the only reason why I'm watching the Super Bowl. According to new RPK, Kahori will return in the MCU within the next four years. And if you have watched my review of What If Season 2 or any of my Epsoc reviews of What If Season 2, then you should know I absolutely enjoyed Gahori. And she was definitely one of my favorite characters of that season. And I did theorize that if we did see her again, she would maybe appear in Secret Wars. And this could very well be the case. Even her voice actors have said, have said she will be very much into the idea of her playing current live action. So, fingers crossed. Also according to Daniel RPK, one of the characters that Marvel has discussed with Ryan Gosling is Nova, and I'd imagine it would be the Richard Ryder Nova, and I think this is a pretty popular fan cast that's been around for a while, of whenever someone talks about, oh hey, who'd you play Nova in the MCU, people throw out Ryan Gosling. Lastly, we have our Supergirl for the DCU. If you recall, we had three options, one of them, two of them were Meg Donnelly and Millie Alcock. Well... Millie Alcock is now our DCU Supergirl. Well, I was rooting for, for McDonnelly because she does have experience, you know, at least voicing the character. Millie Alcock does sound like the, the better option after I kind of did some research and also kind of thought about how they're, how, how you know, her, her Supergirl is more going to be in tune with the Supergirl from Supergirl Mo, Mo, Mo Tomorrow, where she can be sweet yet on the nine, you know, become very fierce and ferocious. I actually need to read Supergirl Mo, Mo Tomorrow. That's also on my safe later on, on Amazon. But yeah, I cannot wait to see her and David Cornsow together on screen as Superman and Supergirl because it's going to be awesome. And that is it for today. Thank you for watching or listening if you're listening to this VMA podcast. If you are listening to this VMA podcast, make sure to do your stuff. Follow me on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. Leave me a voice message and a good review where you can along, along with a five-star rating. If you're watching me on YouTube... Be sure to do the usual stuff of like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my review of One Piece Season 2, or check out my review of Crisis on, on Eminem's Part 1. And until next time, stay happy, stay well, stay healthy, be cool, stay in school, don't do drugs, and I will see you or talk to you next time. Peace out.